on this episode, we're going to be working on a 1994 Nissan Maxima. It has some head gasket issues and, well, it's, it's got some other issues, which we'll take a look at as we move along. It's in pretty good condition for the age and mileage. Uh, I'll give you the quick tour and tell you what's wrong with it and what we're going to be fixing on it. Here. Which is probably not everything that ought to be fixed, but we're going to fix the main thing. So let's get under the hood and see what we got first of all. Over here I got my factory hood prop. We got it because this thing is hydro locked and when the previous owner went to start it up, it just, it was locked up solid. So we, we pulled a couple plugs and it just spat water like a fountain. So basically we're gonna be doing both head gaskets. Let me give you the close up tour here. So engine compartment, here's your V6. Dead battery, fantastically dead. Sorted keys. Let's see if one opens up the old trunk here. We got a floor mat from the hallway, miscellaneous plastic part, security device here. Oh, there's probably a spare tire under there. Oh, we got a funnel. Always good to have a funnel. Oh, tennis ball. Ooh, Winston's gonna like that. I don't know. He doesn't really play with. Oh, we got a spare tire. Look at. Oh, we got pens. Exciting. What we got in here? What we got in here? What we got? Oh, huh. I guess there's supposed to be. I don't know, something in there. Oh, we got spare wires. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's for the antenna there. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll just pretend we didn't see all those loose wires there. Okay. Anyway, what's this? Oh, that's exciting. Didn't think they still use those paper things in high school these days. I thought they were always gone to these newfangled electro mechanical digital electronical thingies. Did I just lock my keys in the... Nope. Uh, nope, I got them. What do we got here? Oh, the back's in good shape. Part of the missing antenna. Uh, you know, floors are pretty good. She'll clean up, I think. Back looks pretty good. She's been smoked in. Well, no, no not on this side. I uh, guess they weren't smoking in that high school. I believe this car has had one repaint, I've been told. And if you look at the door jams and so forth, you can see it was kind of, it was this kind of pearl white. And for some reason, they repainted it this beige. It, I think they said it was a Mako job. Down around the edges and stuff, you know, it's starting to show. Oh, well, she's got a sunroof. Or is it a moonroof? I don't know. I always get them mixed up. She's automatic. Got a aftermarket radio in her. What's in here? Oh, we got we got spare jewelry. Oh, we got charger cords. That's always handy. We got some booklets and all kinds of exciting things. Oh, what do we got here? ID and oh yeah okay there's that guy with the oh well we won't uh yeah we'll just slide that back in there we all know what that is all right uh I won't show that on YouTube body oh what's this oh we got a you know you're going to going to the islands all right okay well guess that's a oh she's got folding mirrors on her that's handy so I'm thinking, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. Could be totally wrong, you know, never having pulled one of these before. I'm sure you always run into all kinds of problems and stuff. But all of this top contraption has to come off and then, um, I don't know, maybe we'll figure out how to put it back on at some point. We'll take pictures or whatnot. Without further ado, I guess we'll start ripping into it and pulling this stuff off. So if you've ever worked on engines that have extensive use of aluminum with steel connectors in them, you'll know the battle I'm facing right now, which is these bolts for the plenum up top here are just seized on there with a hundred years of corrosion and oxidation. 
We've actually gone so far as we've broken a bit off in there, which that's just fantastic. And this one here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's just almost completely rounded out. And I actually didn't do that one. I can't take credit for that. So someone was there before me on that one. Uh, this one's half rounded out. And this one's really stiff. I'm not sure how we're going to get that out exactly because they're, they're buried down in there. And, of course, they don't have a hex head on them. So, you know, I can't get to them. And you don't want to snap a bit off in there like we did on that one. I didn't really have a choice. I just had to give it extra torque. It was give it extra torque or nothing. So we had to try it. So we tried it. So, well, now we got to drill that one out. Probably get that one out with vice grips or something. I don't know about that one there. That one's going to be a little bit of a bear, but most of the others we got loose. So, huh, the fun begins. And of course, that'll continue with the, you know, the head bolts and everything else here, but yippee. <laughs> Well, that's what uh, that's the corrosion you're dealing with here. I guess these these bolts have probably never been out. That's just it's a mess. We got the bolts out, but yeah, for sure we're gonna we're gonna get new ones. So uh, we got them all loose. So hopefully we can pull that plenum up now. The upper plenum is off. Wow, is that dirty? I'm sure it's never been cleaned. We'll take off the lower plenum and keep driving downwards here and then we'll take off all this ancillary stuff around here so we can actually get down to the heads and valve covers. Whew, there's more vacuum hoses on here than a 90s, 80s, 90s GM product. My goodness, just vacuum hoses everywhere. So here's a good one. Hopefully you'll be able to see down inside that bolt on focus focus anyway it's like rounded but there's like a torx head kind of inside of there i'm not sure what's going on with that screw i'm changing my mind i think somebody else has been in here before or i don't know if that's factory that's kind of a stupid way of doing it because that's just asking to twist all kinds of stuff apart and well, it already looks kind of chewed up in there, but I don't know. That one's going to come off pretty tough. That's always one. Well, we got out the funny Torx slash Allen head bolt. <sighs> Why, Nissan? Why? Okay, we got the upper part of the plenum here, so we're down to the, I guess you'd call the intake manifold. I don't know. This is like a, you know, three, four piece plenum here so I don't know where the intake manifold begins and the plenum ends but I guess this is kind of the intake manifold because it goes down to individual runners here so terminology aside so we have to pull the fuel injector rail and then this center manifold section and then we should be down uh, all the way down to the center that should be everything we need to pull off in there so um, more Allen head bolts, you know, thank you Nissan for <clears throat> such a horrible design. They're just, you know, I don't like them. They're just, they're just not fun. So, yeah, so we're going to pull the, the two fuel lines here. There's, there's the in, the in and the return. So, I think. Or there's one to each side. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff in here we're going to pull off. And then this will be gone. Okay, we're on day two. Because yesterday a really important project came up that I really had to get to. You know, it's called laying in bed and complaining how tired you are. and you know. But it was fun. It was a fun project. So I'm glad I got to that. Uh, so, an update to where we are here. Camera went dead yesterday, so didn't get to film the last little bit here, but it's just standard wrench turning and, and bolts and stuff. So let me bring you in here and show you where we're at. So, uh, we got the top of the engine off and took the timing cover off. We, uh, 
secured the timing belt with some zip ties there so we get everything back in the right position. Uh, we got everything disconnected from the cylinder heads front and back and uh, we pulled the uh, wiring harness off so all of this is disconnected here so we can just pull that out of the way and we need to pull that back head there. Um, so we're gonna pull the valve covers, we're gonna pull the heads and uh, oh well we got a thunderstorm rolling in there from the south so that's just fantastic. Um, might be a quick day, I don't know. We'll see how much we get rained on, but that is the joy of doing a shade tree project outside with, well, with no shade tree. I pulled the exhaust manifold bolts front and back, and about half of them were already broken off, you know, just a little turn of the ratchet, and they just snicked right off there, so uh, there were two already missing in the back. That's fantastic. So we're going to have some studs to drill out of these heads when we do finally get them off. Um, you know, adds more fun to the project, I guess, but uh, at least the saving grace there is it'll be easier to do because the heads will be off the engine. I think the only thing left to do is the valve covers and head bolts is the only thing holding them on, so and we'll pull them off and get to it, and oh my, it just it got dark all of a sudden. Well, this might be a quick day. Uh, let's, let's get to work. Less talking, more working. Alright, moment of truth. Did we get everything disconnected? Oh, what can we lift over here? There's got to be a bolt or something we missed here. What did we miss? Found her. There's a little tiny bolt way down in there. I didn't think that little thing would actually be holding the head on. I. That's strange, but it does. All right, let's see. Go in here. There we go. All right. Take a look around. Well, it's a nice little build up there got some crusty stuff here down on top of the gasket uh, it looks well it doesn't look great there's some junk in there there's a piece of head gasket let's see what the underside looks like I can get it up in one piece here studs so there's the underside you can see you know it did have a lot of good bonding there to the block this is an iron block it's aluminum heads and you know anytime you have that metal differential you get different thermal expansion rates and so on and generally they go through head gaskets a little bit quicker because of that. It seems like right there on the bottom of each cylinder probably uh, not the best. Let's look at the underside of the head here and see what we got. Well, we got some crudded up valves pretty good. There's crud build up in here. We got some passageways plugged up. Definitely have to see if we can clean these heads out. The main thing here is we need to we need to check this with a straight edge, you know, in a couple well, a lot of different locations and see if the head's warped. Uh, we're not gonna do a machine shop quality check on that, but we are gonna we are gonna check that out because if you put warped heads back on you'll never get them to seal right. So you know at that point they're if they're warped they either need milled down or you you junk them. So We'll take a look at that. Let's uh, take the rear head off and see what we got there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we got a world. Oh, we had a port plugged up, but 
RTV looks like. Clearly we've been burning coolant there, but we knew that. We didn't pull off the exhaust manifolds or anything. There's studs that come up through into the head. The half of those were broken off. Um, two in the back were actually missing, two or three. And uh, But you can, if, if you pull those studs out, you can drop the head down on straight and then put the studs back into the head or just use bolts. We might just go with bolts. I don't know. The studs are, well, this one only had two surviving studs, I think, out of all of them. So take you off the stand here and... So we got uh, we got the same build up on the valves here. We got somebody used RTV or something, and we got the usual coolant corrosion goop and this piece of RTV here. So you know somebody's been in here before, obviously, but they uh, used RTV and it went through the passageways, and so. Flushing and cleaning these heads is in order. I can tell you that right now. I think we, we kind of caught it. We kind of got lucky and caught it before it went too far because the car was kind of parked after it started leaking because they thought it was the radiator and uh, and then it got the misfire and then they parked it. But the oil, we didn't we didn't couldn't see any in the oil, so it wasn't indicating that it was in there yet. So hopefully it was just in the burning stage. There's the oil hole and that's the one the RTP was in and that's the oil hole so we had good oil circulation uh, there's actually still oil in there just on the surface as you can see it so it was definitely circulating so that's good but our goal here is to get it running and make it a dependable daily driver for someone I know it's probably obvious but for a shade tree rebuild like this if you're gonna let it sit for a couple days like we're going to as we're gonna get to the head work don't leave your don't leave your engine open to the elements or anything cover it up real good uh, you know, pack any of the holes full of paper towels or, or rags and, you know, make sure you take them back out again. But, you know, and, and the exhaust, because you don't want to get anything down in there and get stuck in your catalytic converters. You know, and make sure everything's covered up. I know it might seem obvious, but I see projects sometimes that are just sitting out. People rip them apart and they're just sitting there open to the elements and everything. And that's just not good. You don't, you don't want to risk getting stuff down in there if you can help it. And we'll check the block for straight and level as well. This is an iron block, so this the block is probably, there's a better chance that that's going to be acceptable. If it's not, then this project, again, is going to come to a screeching halt because it's not worth a new engine or lots of machining. So we'll check all that, cover it up, and then we'll uh, get to the head work and see what we wind up with. We got the girlfriend's best pillowcases there covering up our engine. Yeah, we're probably in trouble. Okay, that in mind, we can, we can kind of button this up for now, and we'll move to the heads. And then we won't clean this up. We won't uh, make sure the sur mating surfaces and everything are clean until we know we have a good set of heads. Because if we end up just junking this, then that's just wasted time and energy and everything. So uh, we'll move to the heads and see what we have next. Well, a miracle has happened and everything appears to be salvageable. We got heads cleaned, checked. All surfaces are flat within I don't know what were they about two thousandths three thousandths with a straight edge I mean they're not perfect but for our purposes they're gonna work got a trunk full of parts we got to put back together where are my gaskets oh we're gonna have to get a battery for this thing oh oh I don't know if I can afford that is that in the budget probably not well let me find my gasket set and I got head bolts because they are torqued to yield so we're replacing all the head bolts, we're replacing all the gaskets. Gotta find that stuff and then let's get to work. We got gaskets. I forgot to mention the broken exhaust manifold bolts. They came out really good. We didn't have any trouble with that. And of course I didn't get it on camera because I thought it was just going to be a struggle till the end. So I didn't film it. Sorry. So we got, we got head bolts. We got some extra grade 8 hardware for the hardware that we broke taking out. And we got this gasket set, which should have everything we need in there. Got my torque specs somewhere. Where are my torque specs? Got my torque specs, got my bolt patterns. 
let's get going. So if you put a little, just a little dab of oil on the threads, it ensures that any tightness in the new bolts due to the any threading issues is is taken out. Because you don't you want to avoid that at all possible. snug these snug these down before we do the first torque spec so we're just going to snug them down just tight then we're going to do the first torque spec all right so we're going to set it up first to 22 of course make sure all your sweat just drips right down into the engine this adds extra lubrication nothing like a little salt water to make your engine run better i don't like doing these rear heads because it's just harder to get to everything and See what you're doing but the key thing is here save the easiest for last so we're doing the last the front one last in this case all right what we're gonna do here we're gonna do our first torque spec so looks like this one is our number one bolt This one here. Three. This one here. Okay, that's the first round of torque specs. Round two is forty three. Pounds. So, number one. Next step is loosen all. And 47. This is always a gray area. I don't like it when they give ranges because there's a lot open to interpretation there. That's seven foot pounds. Oh. Generally, I put it right in the middle, but because the torque spec is so low, 47 foot pounds, I'm just going to go right up to 47. Uh, thing is, if you do it, the second spec is 43, so if you go midway, you're at about 43 again. I don't know. I'm just going to go right up to 47. We have our heads on, and the bolts are torqued. So, we have to... Tighten down the top rocker arms to spec because we had to take these off to get these bolts in and out. And then we can put the timing, inner timing cover back on, timing gears, etc., etc., start buttoning this up. Alright, so we have the valve covers on. I opted to put the timing gears on. And now I'll do the exhaust manifolds, but I wanted to make sure the timing was set up and everything. We can get the exhaust manifolds, and that will be all the tough stuff then. Everything else is like the AC compressor and the timing chain cover and timing belt cover and just all the top stuff. So exhaust manifolds next. So we're on the exhaust manifold gaskets. Front one went on nice. 
but I had started on the back one and uh, we were having uh, a lot of difficulty with that and I fought with it I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it to line up and I finally decided to go look at the old gasket and here's the gasket they ship in the kit both are the same for front and back the ones they ship in the kit and here's the gasket that came out so as you can see that's why I can't get the bolts in the manifold line up with the bolts in the gasket so be warned if you buy gasket kits check your gaskets first I usually don't call out manufacturers but this is a I don't know this is a kit off the interwebs this is made by some company called evergreen quality gaskets I'm not sure what the best route to take here is I don't have time to wait for the correct gasket. I'm tempted to put the old one back in. I'm just not sure here. I mean, I don't like reusing it. It is an exhaust manifold gasket. I don't like reusing them, but it isn't blown out. And it isn't bent up just too bad. I don't know what we're going to do. I'm kind of lean, leaning towards reusing this old one as much as it pains me. Got some more things on. Got the timing cover on started to put the wiring back on we got the ac compressor on which that's just a bear i didn't film that because words were had uh distributors back in i think that was in before uh thermostat hose here and like i said we're starting to put the wiring loom back on and of course this stuff will go back on we're going to put the uh, center section of the plenum on here shortly and we are cleaning that up at the moment. It's pretty dirty. We're uh, brushing and cleaning the passages. There was some grime in there that we don't want to suck into the engine. And we're going to clean the uh, thermostat housing here. We've already gotten some of the corrosion, uh, aluminum oxidation off. I don't know if I have replacements for the seats for the injectors or not. I don't know. I'll have to check the kit, but we'll clean that, and we'll get that on, hopefully, before the rain hits, and maybe a few more things, I don't know. Well, we've been chipping away at this thing between rains. Obviously, we don't have a shade tree, so it's hard to work in the rain. I wish I had a money tree, though, but I don't. So we got the the plenum base on and I believe we have most of the coolant lines hooked up I'm gonna do the radiator hose I gotta hook up the vacuum line mess here finish the electrical harness and put the top of the plenum slash intake on and the distributor cap we put the plugs in they're gapped to spec I have to reverse the fuel lines I checked that I got them on backwards and then I think we should be ready for preliminary testing we're assuming the engine runs, of course, you know, because I put it back together, so who knows. This ground here that goes to the distributor body was, uh, it was loose and it broke when we took it off. And this ground here that goes to the uh, coolant neck here, that needs a new wire. Probably going to rain again today, but we'll see. So, got my coffee. You know. By the time I get done drinking the coffee, it should be ready for rain, and then we get nothing done. So let's get cracking. So this is the next piece of the plenum slash intake. It's pretty gummed up. We're gonna clean this up. I believe this one. This one has a few messed up bolts from taking it out. Uh, we have replacement bolts for that. Get it cleaned up and get this put on with a new gasket. So we're cleaning the plenum on top of the plenum slash intake manifold. It's very carboned up. Uh, if you ever wonder how this happens, it's because of the exhaust gas recirculation. And, you know, inevitably, you're going to get carbon from your exhaust inside your air distribution system. So, anyway, there's a divider here in the middle with a butterfly, a pair of butterfly valves, which is controlled by this vacuum arrangement over here and I was trying to hold them open and you just put your finger over there and when it, with it closed and it should hold it but it doesn't hold it so I figured I'd test it and 
it doesn't even hold a vacuum so we're gonna have to replace that activator that vacuum activator um, everything else looks we're going to replace some hoses this one this one uh, had some issues coming off and they are they get old and brittle from the heat and the carbon and everything else so other than that we should be good to finish cleaning this and put it back on this we can do after it's back on of course because we can access that um, and of course we can verify if it works because if it pulls this and holds it closed we know the butterflies are working because they're all connected in here so there's nothing to stop us from putting this back on uh, we'll finish cleaning this and then we'll get her on the top of the engine and uh, we can get this part ordered okay we got I think we got it completely back together Just, uh, distributor cap and wires are on all the electricals on we fixed the two ground connections so i guess we're just gonna see what happens if we try to start it up play with the distributor i don't know so let's give it a try what are we missing here let's just verify our plug wire routing and uh, i guess verify our plug wire routing Okay, so I think what we got is when I stabbed a distributor back in, you know, just randomly with a little bit of hope and crossing my fingers, uh, I must have got it wrong. So we're going to reset it to top dead center, pull that distributor cap, and see where we're at. And, you know, maybe get it right. We'll see. On round two of the timing uh, got too dark last night and I was too tired and it was just a bad combination we're pretty close on the timing the timing light says we're about I don't know 15 20 degrees 30 40 degrees too advanced uh, I guess the timing marks are way way advanced so I think we got to go another tooth on the distributor because we're out of adjustment Need to, there, this, this doesn't have much to begin with. This is a full range of adjustment, but we need more adjustment. Uh, we need more advance, and we can't get it. So we're gonna pull the distributor and stab her back in again. Oh, good thunder! Oh, well, that's just fantastic. Uh, radiator. We pressure tested the system, and well, we had a leak right here. Um, I'm going to try to patch it the redneck way because it's just, it's just plastic. We're going to put some JB Weld on it to stiffen it up because I don't know if you can see it, but it's still a little flexible there. I want this, I don't know, apparently it's a weak spot, but I don't know how well this will hold up to the heat and everything anyway. We'll see. Um, so we'll get to the timing and if we get it started, we won't run it long because we don't have a cooling system yet. Uh, got our test battery in. We're ready to reposition this distributor and give her another go. Ah. Nope, we don't have time for that. Dad, you ready? Yeah. Ah. Stop. Hang on. Spark plug's being. Do it again. Ah. Hold on. Spark plug's being ornery again. So it's hitting on about three cylinders. Looks like the spark plug wires are bad on three. I don't know if they're leaking through or, these look like the original wires, so they still have the numbers and the lengths and everything from Nissan on them. So I've triple, quadruple checked them and I guess we're gonna have to get new wires. It's morning, I think it's morning. I don't know, I've been up for a while. You know, keep weird hours in this job. Anyway, we've, uh, Got our radiator patch here. I have to check this. Pressure test that. But first, uh, we got a new cap and spark plug wires. Hopefully, they're the right ones. Uh, had to order those. I had to wait a day or so for them. So these rotors here. This is the new one. This is the old one. Uh, you can kind of see uh, the the metal of the rotor is sandwiched between 
two insulators and then of course it's wrapped in the plastic here so that this is all insulated. You can kind of see if you look real close here how worn the old one is and it's kind of rusty and corroded as well. I don't know if you can see it but this one is actually worn back a little bit. And then you get arcing and it gets worse and worse over time. This goes down here and then Give you a nice screw here for it. On this old one, if you can see it here, it's cracked, cracked right up there, which probably isn't critical because the center is still intact. It actually holds it, but you know it's just another sign of wear and tear. Hopefully, this will resolve all of our spark issues. And this goes on with the coil wire this way towards the coil and they give you new screws for the cap as well. This one also sits down a little nicer. The old one's a little loose. I guess it's just worn with time and everything. So just some of the things to watch out for when you're looking at these. If I cared a good deal about this car I would have just replaced it from the outset but I was hoping we could get away with it using the old cap and rotor. So spark plug wires. Now the old ones, they're probably original, they actually had numbers on them. Obviously this one is the coil because it's short. There we go. The ones in the front are different from the ones in the back. The ones in the front have the tabs that go on the actual top of them, and they're a little bit longer on the hard piece because they go down through the intake and plenum here. Let's compare our lengths and see what we got. Well, that's nice. We got shortest to longest right there. Okay. Well, that's easy enough. So now these, are these different lengths? These are different lengths as well. This is our coil cover. Put that back on. All right. I believe that we are ready to try to start again. Maybe, if we're lucky, it won't fire up, and then we can do our fine-tuning on the timing. Let's see what happens. Looks like I need to get my timing light. Well, I need to get my assistant out here so I can play with the timing while they're... We might still be one tooth off on here. I gotta take another look at the timing marks down there. Especially now we have working spark plugs. <sighs> Check my adjustment. Just get in and do the second yep, thing. Yep, whenever you're ready. I think I figured out what our timing issue was. And that was the mechanical timing was off. I was a tooth or two off to the right on the timing when I put the belt back on I had the I had the gears and the belt zip tied together but I think it slipped around the bottom of the crankshaft and readjusted itself that way because both the cams were aligned but they weren't aligned with the crankshaft properly so it was very close but wasn't wasn't quite good enough to to run and fire but before we go too much further with that, I, I think it's going to fire now. But before we go too much further with that, we're going to pressure test the radiator. Put on our pressure gun here. Let's see if we can pressurize it. Oh, oh, come on. Come on, baby. Well, maybe. Oh, if it's leaking, where is it leaking? I don't know. We might have to put water in it and see where she leaks from. So, I found a leak here, and if I put pressure on this, you can see it's leaking from around here and up along the top of the radiator there. Just pumping out water like there's no tomorrow. This whole top of the radiator is plastic, and I just, I don't like plastic radiators, but I took this mount off, and it's, it's under this mount, the one where it's leaking, so... I don't know if that's a weak point or what's going on there, but 
we're gonna have to patch it. Well, we finished our radiator patch. There was quite a bit of cracking going on up here that wasn't even evident until we pressurized it. Some of the, just some hairline cracks that weren't even visible. But it is holding pressure now. I'm gonna try to start the engine and get the timing set. It looks like the spec I can find is the first timing mark is top dead center and each one is five degrees. So we're gonna set it right around, try to set it right around 15 degrees. So it runs, uh, runs good. We got the timing adjusted. I'm gonna replace these hood struts so we don't have to use our factory hood prop. I guess we'll top off our radiator and do our final checks on the engine. Oh, we have to change the oil first. There is, uh, it's old and there's some gasoline in it. So gotta change that, I forgot about that. Then we'll be ready to check it out. I think we're ready to start this thing up and get it heat soaked and go through all of that. Coolant's topped off, pressure tested that. Uh, oil changed. I think we're ready to go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Started up good. Uh, she's running good. No extraneous lights or anything, so I think she's hitting on all six. That's a good sign. She's running smooth. bring her up to operating temp and see what happens so we have we do have a check engine light I was wrong in that no lights are on and we do seem to have some kind of misfire uh, so we're gonna try to pull the codes here and the way you do that in this car is you pull the panel off the passenger side here to get to the back of the ECM and there is a dial here and this one this has a this one has obviously never been checked or anything because it has the original plastic seal on it, which I've broken by sticking my screwdriver through because you have to. And what we're going to do is turn this clockwise, fully clockwise for two seconds, then back counterclockwise, and then there's LEDs in here that are going to flash, and we're going to count them, and we're going to get the codes that way. You do this with the ignition on, I'm told. It's hard to hold the camera and do this all at once, so... I'll get back to you in here in a minute when we uh, actually figure out what the codes are. We got a code 51. Five quick red flashes from the red LED, one quick flash from the green LED. So, 5, 1, 51. Uh, it says it's something about injector circuit, so we're going to look that up and uh, try to narrow that down a little bit because that's pretty broad. We got her running. Uh, no check engine lights. So here's what we did. Uh, basically, we checked the resistance of all of the fuel injectors just to make sure they were all okay. They were all within an ohm of each other. So we figured maybe there was some dirtiness and clogging in there. And so I was really skeptical about this, but we threw some Berrymans down there in the fuel tank and blew out the gunk. And you know what? It actually worked. So she's running beautifully now. No codes, firing on all six cylinders. Everything's beautiful. So I guess that'll do it for the video on the engine on this 94 Maxima. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some more as we go through it. Uh, we did the hood struts, so you don't have to have this. Ow. You don't have to have the fancy hood prop anymore. I'm sure there'll be lots more as we go through and do some of the cosmetics and uh, at the very least it needs a wash and a scrub down and she's been collecting some pine needles sitting here and things like that. We'll go over, give her a clean inside and out. If you want to see that, I will 
eventually when that comes out maybe make a playlist and obviously if you want to see any of our other videos or anything that we're going to be working on down the road feel free to subscribe and we always appreciate any likes or comments that'll do it for this video if you made it this far thanks for watching and tune in next time